HCV is not just an hepatitis virus. It keeps stimulating the immune system. In fact, about 25% of patients with they see have detectable levels of cryoglobulins, which are ab an abnormal rheumatoid factor originated by hyperstimulation of B cells. The same kind of hyperstimulation of B cells may in fact originate clonal expansion and therefore cause lymphoma. Lymphoma, mostly B cell lymphoma, has been associated with HCV at variable rates in different countries. Countries where the prevalence at baseline is higher, such as Japan, some areas in the Middle East, Italy, for example, or other southern Mediterranean countries have a very close relationship between B lymphoma and HCV, whilst other countries have a less clear-cut relation. But still, the very idea of eradicating HCV, not just as a way to cure hepatitis, but also of preventing extrahepatic complications such as cryoglobulinemia related vasculitis or even lymphoma is quite attractive. And it's even more attractive nowadays that drugs which can be used without all the hassle of interferon are on the horizon. There are different ways to approach the issue of hepatitis C cryoglobulinemia. One is to eradicate the virus, which is the ideal, the ideal way to do it, the best one but it's not always possible, or at least has not been possible in all patients up to now. The other way is to reduce the consequences that the immune process and the inflammation induced by the immune process have on the endothelium, meaning the vasculitis and all the organ damage. Essentially, interferon plus ribavirin, which are the basic stuff on which hepatitis therapy has been based over the last years, have been used with more or less the same rate of success they have in non cryoglobulinemic patients. Say about 50% of genotype 1 could be eradicated, but this 50% relates only to those patients who could receive interferon-based therapies, and many more could not, in fact, if they had organ damage, mostly kidney damage, they were not certainly prime candidates for interferon and ribavirin. In fact, even adding first-generation protease inhibitors such as bosepravir or telaprevir has somewhat raised the percentage of success, but has also raised the rate of complication. A recent contribution by Sadon shows that 40% of patients undergoing triple therapy for cryoglobulinemic uh, uh, disease, HCV disease, have severe complication which need stopping or severely changing the schedule of treatment. Hence, antiviral treatment is a promise, but it's a promise which will be fulfilled only when all oral therapies without interferon will become available. And these are probably even uh, at the basis of the immunological mechanism, the best one, because there won't be any immune stimulating action of interference which could theoretically make the disease induced by cryoglobulins even worse. On the other side, as I was saying, it is possible to reduce the immune activity of the disease either by simple means such as corticosteroids, but corticosteroids have a deep immunosuppressive effect and they are certainly not good partners for antiviral treatments. Instead, an anti-CD20 antibody, rituximab, has been used either alone or in combination with pegylator interferon and ribavirin with good results. Good results only in the sense of um, containment of disease activity, not of viral eradication. But viral eradication, at least, does not seem to be much affected by rituximab. So nowadays, we have a rather wide armamentarium to use in patients with cryoglobulinemic vasculitis related to HCV infection and uh, this armamentarium will certainly become wider and more applicable in the whole uh, spectrum of patients once polymerase and replicase inhibitors combined with protease inhibitors will be available for use.